Well, hello, Bucket Pond family. Welcome back to the channel. This is part two of our bladder snail breeding project. Please watch part one if you haven't already. Uh, you guys really seem to enjoy episode one, and I'm very excited to bring you episode two now. So let's jump right in. In this video series, uh, we started by capturing a rare mutated bladder snail from the backyard ponds. Uh, we nicknamed this individual Tails, for obvious reasons. Uh, Tails has a forked foot and a series of black stripes on his body, uh, at least on the antenna and on the end of the tail. So these are very interesting traits, and I captured Tails, put him in a brand new nano aquarium, and I had hoped that Tails would self-fertilize over time, which these snails can do and uh, create a wave of purebred two-tailed bladder snails. Unfortunately, a hitchhiker did sneak into the project. A regular bladder snail snuck in here, impregnated tails, and changed the course of my experiment. Uh, you know, that's unfortunate, but it's okay. It's going to work out. So here's tails as he crawls around today with a hatchling on his shell. They are mating. As it turns out, uh, Tails laid a ton of eggs off of the uh, uh, mating success he had with that hitchhiker snail. And uh, even though I did remove that hitchhiker, those eggs have grown up. They've hatched and reached adulthood very quickly. At first, Tails was uh, very much disinterested in the new hatchlings, but he's been breeding with them pretty readily now. And it's very interesting. They seem to be choosing to breed with tails, particularly. Now, I believe that's because all of the hatchlings are siblings. They are all are closely related to one another. So it would make sense that they would choose to breed with tails, who is the most different, the, the most unique snail in their population. Uh, that being said, the offspring, the hatchlings, are very healthy and some of them appear to be just a typical bladder snail uh, with a few different colors, a light blue or white or purple. But a few, about half of them, show some very interesting traits. They don't have the forked tail that we had hoped for, but they do have the black stripe on the tail and on the antenna. I believe these are uh, visual indicators that they have inherited some of Tails and uh, some of his DNA. I'm very excited about this. Now in time, by keeping this population isolated and allowing them to breed back to Tails as much as they will choose to do so, we should be able to reinforce these unusual DNA traits, uh, these unusual genetic traits. Uh, now, also inside of this aquarium, I do have a ton of microfauna, some Daphnia, copepods, and some other things. Uh, I know it's not the best angle, the best shot, but there they are. Uh, but they are second, uh, <laughs> second priority in this aquarium. Our snails are the focus of this project. While looking over at them, I did find a few that were very brilliantly blue-colored. That's a little bit more blue than our usual specimens. And uh, they do have that black stripe. I might even capture that blue individual and start a second uh, isolation experiment. I'll have to think about that. But here's another showing that really nice black stripe. And that's an unusual trait for our snails. They even uh, vaguely resemble Stenophyga marmorata which is an entirely different species from Brazil. And I think that's really cool. I highly doubt that any Brazilian snails got into my project. And uh, even if they did, that would not explain the forked tail. So I think that's just a coincidence, but very cool nonetheless. So I've decided to let them stay in this aquarium and let them breed back to tails to hopefully reinforce the unusual genetic traits that we want to see in this population. So now that we've decided to keep this tank going as it is, I do need to clean it up a little bit. We've had a ton of growth in here. 
uh, a little bit of moss, <laughs> spike rush, and a ton of filamentous algae. Now I have to be careful. I'm going to remove some of the filamentous algae, but I don't want to stress out the snails too much. I know that most people do not think about uh, stressing out their bladder snails. <laughs> that doesn't even occur to them. Uh, but yes, stress can kill adult bladder snails, especially if you change their water parameters drastically, or if you do something like this where you're kind of modifying their entire aquarium. So I'm a little worried. You do have to be careful, but I think we'll be okay. I'm, I'm being very mindful not to take any snails out of here, though I'm sure we'll get a few hatchlings and uh, also some of our microfauna. Now, I'll be removing most of the spike rush and most of the filamentous algae as well. Uh, there's a ton of videos on YouTube about how to, like, remove filamentous algae all in caps. Oh my god, algae in my aquarium. What, what am I going to do? Tons of videos like that. But I actually like this stuff. I think that in a tank without fish... Filamentous algae can be very powerful. Um, say you're one of those people who just cannot raise plants. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd kill every plant I have, right? And uh, maybe you just can't get it to work for you for whatever reason. This algae, if you can get it to grow, it will be very successful. <laughs> and that's kind of how I look at things. Like, it's bad because they say it's bad. It might be a little bit of an eyesore, but if properly handled, you can have a very nice nano aquarium that can glow like an emerald jewel or a gem on your shelf. I think it's really cool. So I'm just pulling most of the filamentous algae out of here. Um, I'm basically harvesting it from this project because we're contemplating an algae-powered ecosphere in the near future. A uh, suggestion from you guys. Uh, forgive me while I play with this stuff for a while. <laughs> Uh, now, I, I won't be able to remove all of it from uh, Tails Aquarium here, and that's fine. I've removed most of it, and now I'm just going to break up what's left into little fragments and let it regrow. We're basically reseeding the aquarium here. And uh, that's because I will harvest uh, more filamentous algae in the future. Uh, our spike rush also grew a lot, <laughs> a ton in here. And I think that's because of that fluval stratum, that new substrate we used. It's very, very fertile. I'm going to do about a 10% water change on this tank, uh, just for good measure. You know, it couldn't hurt. And I also want a sample of this water that is full of filamentous algae fragments. Uh, this might be a, a fun project to do off screen. Yeah. I like algae, <laughs> it's interesting. And, you know, we have these photosynthetic organisms that want to grow desperately in our aquariums, and we all hate them so much uh, because they grow too easily. Like, think about this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here's what I removed from the aquarium. We have a nice jar full of algae, duckweed, spike rush, and some other stuff. I added a few pond pebbles in here, river pebbles, uh, just to weigh that stuff down. There's some microfauna in there. Likely some hatchlings from our unique snail population, and some other stuff. I'm just going to clean up our jar a little bit. It doesn't look too bad. It's a little dirty. It's got to settle, so we'll come back tomorrow. Hey guys, here we are, 24 hours later or thereabouts, and it's time to feed the aquarium. I'm going to add a slice of cucumber. Just a single slice. I've kept the feeding schedule very light for this tank because it's a brand new aquarium. It's a growing bio load. Our uh, microfauna, our snails, they're all just now starting to find their footing and to uh, really get their population started. So I don't want to overfeed the tank. Now cucumbers are not the best food for your snails. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, fruit in general, not the best item. You know, bananas and strawberries and stuff that you've seen me feed my snails. Not the best foods for them. Uh, but it's what I choose to supplement their diet that is primarily made of bacteria and algae. So in that regard, in that respect, uh, the cucumbers do a good job. I'll also add a thin slice to the uh, material we removed. 
as well as a few slices for the background aquariums. I do maintain a large population of char aquariums, <laughs> and uh, cucumbers are pretty cheap and reliable for food. Now back to Tails in his aquarium. This is actually one of his babies, one of his hatchlings, along with another, uh, the second generation hatchling right there, a little tiny guy. And it looks like they're investigating a old piece of duckweed or cucumber seed. Uh, they'll eat it if they can. They're really cool. Uh, they won't eat live plants, but they'll eat everything else. And I think that's very important. All right, here we are three days after cleanup, and the tank looks better. It's not a beautiful gallery level aquarium, but it doesn't have to be. It's a mutant bladder snail nursery, and it's perfectly suited for that purpose. I'm very happy with it. We have a strong population of unique bladder snails inside. You can see their elongated tails and dark stripes as they move about the tank, and I'm very excited to uh, see where this goes in the future. In time, as they inbreed within this aquarium, as they breed back to tails, we should see a stronger reinforcement of those unique traits in future generations. Meaning that uh, every new generation should be a little more interesting. <laughs> Uh, as they, you know, further reinforce these traits within their DNA. They're, they're going to be inbred, to be honest with you. Uh, something I've avoided in my other populations of bladder snails. But in this case, with these unique traits of the long tails and the black stripes, uh, yeah, it's worth it. In the future, I would like to acquire some other mutations from you guys. I've heard some rumors out there of what you might be up to and uh, would like to cross them into this population until we can really create something very interesting. But, yeah. yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Big thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We'll see these snails again in Part 3, eventually. For now, I'm going to let them sit and relax in their jar, and uh, let them get a little funky with one another <laughs> for a while until we see some interesting offspring.